Well, good morning, everyone. This is our session on setting up N1 MM in order to support the VWS special event in December 2020. Uh, my name is Doug. My call sign is AK4AO, and uh, I will be your guide through the process of setting up uh, N1 MM. What is N1 MM? It is a leading contest logger. Some would claim the leading contest logger. It is a um, very uh, robust piece of software. The downside of that is that uh, if you look at the instructions uh, for N1MM, it can seem a little daunting at first. However, the process of setting it up and getting it going for our operation is not all that involved, but there are some gotchas that can occur along the way. So we'll uh, go over those. So if you just type in 1MM in a Google search, um, you can quickly find it and go to the full install. And then it says to download the full install file, click here. So I've already done that. Uh, after you have downloaded it, the way to get it going is to right click and run as administrator and that will make sure that uh, it gets set up as it needs, as you need it to. Now I'm not going to do that process now in front of you because after you run that install, it reboots the computer and that would kick everybody uh, off the Zoom session if they were to do that now. So. Uh, if anyone does need to do that, download it, and uh, we will see you when you come back. But otherwise, we'll take it from there. Doug, may yeah. I ask a question? Yes. Um, since I misinterpreted the instructions last night, I hit the install, but I did not right click and say run as administrator. I just, when it downloaded, I hit the button or tapped on the thing that said open file. Okay, you'll probably be okay. If you find that you have any problems with security or whatever, then uh, just reinstall it. So that, that is step one. Now, if uh, you go to downloads, program files, you also want to download the latest update file. All right, and uh, again, from the N1MM page, I went to downloads, program files, and latest update. Okay, and here I find a uh, file that says N1MM logger update 1.08779. Uh, and I've already downloaded that. So what I'm gonna do now is, I think I just better show you my full desktop at this point. And we're gonna run that and then we'll get the whole thing going. This is just my downloads folder. So I've already run the full installer. Now I'm gonna run the update. Okay. Let's talk about updates in N1MM. Okay, uh, the way N1MM works is first of all, there are lots and lots and lots of updates. And the reason for that is that N1MM uh, shows different window configurations depending on the various contests and also adds new features. Uh, it's at the point now where I cannot myself think of anything that I want to do that it can't do. There's just, it's so feature rich and it just keeps growing. Uh, the upshot of that is that there are lots of updates. For the purposes of the special event, you're fine to install a new update whenever N1MM offers it. Uh, for field day, the story is that uh, there we interconnect all the copies of N1MM and they need to be on the same version. So for field day, watch out for the rules, but uh, for this event, uh, you're fine to uh, update N1MM whenever it invites you to do so. Doug, so, well, I have a question to ask. I, I already had the program installed, the methodology I use for update is I use the tools, check for new program version and install. Is this something different that I should do as well or is it the same thing? Uh, you'll get to the same place either way. So Thank you're you. fine. Doug, just as another data point, I installed N1MM for the first time last night and when I opened it this morning, it prompted me to upgrade and just 
did it all automatically? Yes. So I've started in one MM, and this first window I get to says, "Do you want to convert an existing database or create a new in one MM logger database?" So let's first talk about what a database is in in one MM. Uh, it's really uh, just a like a folder for your logs. So as you operate various events and contests, you will have a new log for each one of those. A database holds one or more logs. Uh, you can have only one database or you can have as many databases as you would like. Now here's what I do because my station uh, is operated on my call sign, on club call signs, on special event call signs. What I do is create a new database uh, for each call sign that I operate under. And that kind of helps me find things and keep things straight and avoid uploading the wrong file to Logbook of the World and so on. Uh, but you can uh, start out with uh, uh, the default. And in this case, I'm starting up from scratch. So I have to create a new N1 MM database. You know, it thinks I don't have one because that's all off in some backup place. So I'm going to say, okay, country.dat complete. Okay, this, let me just tell you what this is. There's a file called a name ending in cty.dat. That's a uh, list of countries and it's just something that in one MN needs, and when it says it's complete, it just means it's happy. So this particular instantiation of using N1 MM, we're going to be doing it as W4F, correct? Yes. Since this is my first time, then I can go ahead and leave it as just the new logger and database because I don't have one for K1 NME, right? Okay, well, let me push the button here and say okay, and I think that will help. N1 MM is starting, it says. Now, what's, what's happening at this point, I've told it to create a new database. It's suggesting this name, hams.s3db, or H-A-M. I don't want to call it ham because I like to organize databases as I described, so I'm going to call it W4F. But you can leave uh, the default if you want it. In one in it doesn't care, it's just whatever works for you. So we'll save that. And now it says set up your station info in config station. So let's go ahead and say, okay, uh, let me talk through the screen. Uh, you don't have to fill in uh, all of the information, but I'm going to uh, fill in the call sign. I want to use the whiskey 4 f call sign at this point, okay? Because this is going to uh, be uh, creating a log for W4F. Uh, your name is actually optional. I'm going to fill mine in. Uh, I don't need the address. Uh, I'm going to fill in my grid square. I've had N1MM installed for a while, and, and uh, I created the new database like you just did. It did not prompt me for this uh, dialog, so I'm assuming my call sign is in, so I, I need to change it, I guess. Uh, is that so global across all databases at that point then? So I have to remember to put it back? I believe it is global to the current database, but I'm not 100% sure of that. So you're gonna to have to experiment. But for the log that you are about to create, you want uh, the station information to be W4F. And you can go in and reconfigure that at any time. One thing that is required on this screen is the ARRL section. It won't let you go past the screen without it. Our ARRL section is VA for Virginia, unless you're outside of Virginia, and uh, then you'll need to know what your section is. Real quick, uh, for Mike, I just confirmed that the all this data in this uh, box is unique to the database. So if you if you have another database with your local call sign and stuff, it's all saved. So I still have to edit though, because right now it's still got KA4CDN, but it just picked that up from a other database, I guess. Yeah, so let me say okay here, get to the point where I now have my database. You can go to config, change your station data uh, anytime you want to and anytime it needs to change. So you can get the screen back that way. So here is the main screen of N1MM. So now I'm just sharing the screen. Okay, this is called the entry window. 
And in general, this is the window that you will use to log your contacts. But before we do that, let's, um, well, no, we can, we can talk about this screen as is. At this point, I am not interfaced to the rig and it's gonna accept phone or CW contacts, which is fine. Now, for those of you doing FT8, I would suggest that you not worry about that in N1MM. So one of the options for, uh, for your log would be phone, CW, and digital. You don't need to log your FT8 contacts into N1MM. So just having it set up for phone, CW is fine. If you're only going to work FT8, uh, you don't need N1MM at all. So at this point, uh, let's just play with this. Before you do that, don't you want to set up a template that we're going to use rather than just a generic one here? It's already created a, a log of the right type, but let me just show you that. Uh, typically, you'll want to create a new log. So let's do, let's do that step, even though we could get by without it here. And see, the default log type is DX. And that's what we're going to use for uh, this event so if you pull this down, you can see there are a bazillion choices. Uh, so if, for example, you were going to operate NAQP, you would come down to and pick the right one, NAQP, CW, RIDI, sideband, whatever. And what that's going to do is tailor the screen uh, for that particular contest. I wanted to hit OK on the station information. What is the ARRL section that we, it won't let us get past? The ARRL section, if you live in Virginia, is VA. I'm going to leave the start date alone. It won't hurt for me to do that, even though the, the special event hasn't started yet. But what that will let me do is go ahead and log some dummy contacts. So I'm going to show you that in a minute. I want the category to be single off. The band all is fine. Uh, our power is actually low. I can change it here, although that's going to turn out to not matter. I'm going to leave sideband and CW, which will let me operate both. You can also pick uh, just CW or just sideband if uh, you're only going to do uh, one of those. My station is fixed. The assisted field uh, doesn't matter. We're probably, let me just tell you what it is. Uh, assisted typically means are you using a spotting site to help you in a contest. And generally, in many contests, uh, they want to score you differently depending on whether uh, you are using spotting or you're not using spotting. For us, it doesn't matter. One transmitter, and there is something I would like you to change here. So the operator is going to be your call sign, in my case, AK4AO. And that will record that in the log and let us, when the logs are consolidated, know who operated what. On the other hand, if you use the uh, macros, it's going to use the W4F. We'll talk about macros later. Here is my log, logging window. So you can see this better, I'm just going to log some dummy contacts the way that I would in the real world. And we'll talk a little bit how you can uh, manipulate the log and so on. Now, I'm not interfaced to the rig at this point, so I need to tell it uh, the band and mode. And I do that by clicking on one of these entries in the uh, two vertical uh, bars over on the left. So there's a bar for CW and a bar for phone. Uh, I've got 20 meter phone selected. Let me go ahead and do that. And then I'm ready to call CQ and make some contacts. So let's say that uh, I work W2WCM. So I'm gonna uh, type in the call sign. Now, at this point, what I would suggest you do is press the space bar. So let me do that and let's see what happens. I don't have those bars on the side there, that CW and phone bar. Did I miss a step? Uh, what, what do you have over on the left? Nothing. The dialogue just uh, stops right next to the call entry line. Are you okay. connected to your rig right now? Yes. Okay, so it's sensing it from your rig information. That is another option. We'll get to that in a moment, but I want to show you the standalone option because some folks may not want to interface. Uh, what I've done at this point is I entered, I made one entry, W2WCM, that was the station I worked, and then I pressed the space bar. What happened was, I had filled in a 
for the sent and receive signal report and opened up the name box. So this is a kind of a peculiarity of the way N1MM works. If I entered W2, WCM and press the tab key, I would go to the next field. So tab means go to the next field. Spacebar means go to the next field that you probably have to fill in. What's the difference? Well, in lots of contests and for the special event, the signal report that is sent is always the same. So N1MM says, well, you probably don't have to mess with that, so I'm going to take you over to the name field. But guess what? We don't need to fill in the name field, although it's certainly OK. So at this point, I can just press Enter. And if you go ahead and do that, you'll see it go up into your log. So I'd like everybody to give that a try. Uh, call sign, entry, space bar, and enter. OK, now let's take a look at the log and look at the entry. So it has the timestamp, the call. It put in a frequency of 14.2, which is the band edge for phone on 20 meters. So that's what it's going to default to. If you tell it that you're working phone, it will put in the uh, 14200 by default. That's fine. We don't care what the exact frequency was on 20 meters. All we care about is the band. Now, if you wanted to, you could tell it your frequency uh, by typing into the entry screen a frequency in kilohertz. So you'd type in 14.238 or whatever it was. But you don't need to do that. You know, for purposes of our log, just band and mode and timestamp and partner's call sign is all you need. Notice the mode was defaulted to upper side band because if you're working phone on 20 meters, uh, you usually will use upper rather than lower side band. So it does all that automatically. And let's just uh, do another one. Let's work K6BFA. And I'm going to press space bar and enter. In my log up at the top, K6BFA turned yellow. What does yellow mean? N1MM has a list of call signs that it knows of folks who often work contests. So it looks there to see if it's there, and it turns it yellow if it's not there. But if you're comfortable in the call sign, just ignore it. It's not a problem. However, if I wanted to change it, maybe the K6BFA was a mistake. Let me tell you about fixing mistakes. Let's see, I think, let me just share the log for a moment. Okay, so now I'm sharing the log. And if I double click up here in the log, you see it opens up. If it wasn't BFA, say it was BXA, I can change it. So that's, that's how you fix a mistake. Now, what if the mistake is so disastrous you want to get rid of it entirely? You can just uh, right click on this and pick delete contact. <clears throat> And it says, are you sure? And I'm sure, and it's gone. Doug, it's Ray, K2HYD. I apologize for coming in late. Maybe you already covered this. What is the exchange that we're going to use in the, in the contest? Or maybe you're going to cover that. Uh, just the signal report, which is always 5-9. OK, so <clears throat> we don't, we're not expecting anything from the other station. We're just, we're just acknowledging that we send his call sign and, and the 59 or 599. OK, I send CQ and W2WCM answers. What I'm going to say is W2WCM59. W2WCM is going to say, thank you, 59. And that's it. That's all we need. Uh, one more thing I should tell you. So I've been playing with the log and putting non-meaningful stuff in it. Uh, I suggest you do that and get used to N1MM. But after you've done that and put in, you know, a whole bunch of entries, you don't want those to stay around for actual operations. You can just type wipe log. And if I type wipe log here, I get a pop-up that says, do you really want to get rid of the log? And if I say yes, you see all the entries are gone. So that's how you can play around with it and get used to N1MM. Yeah, Doug, uh, where, where, what did you do to get to the wipe log? 
I just typed wipe log in the place where I would otherwise enter a call sign. Okay, okay, that, that answers my question, thank you. So you notice that all the other boxes on that row are labeled and the first box is not. And the reason is because the first box does multi-duty. You can enter a frequency, uh, you can enter a mode. So for example, if I wanted to uh, uh, operate lower sideband on, which is unusual, I would type in LSB and it would say, okay, I'm gonna log it that way. Well, I thought you just typed in WL, but when I type that in, it doesn't wipe the log. No, the W-I-P-E-L-O-G. Oh, okay. I like wasn't that. paying enough attention. Okay. Wipe log then really means move everything in the log into your database. Is that correct? No. Wipe log says empty out your current log entirely. So it will destroy all the data in your log. Now, why, why do you want to do that? And you would want to do that if you're doing what I'm doing, playing with the log to get used to N1MM ahead of the contest. So okay. after you've entered your first real QSOL in the log, you definitely don't want to do wipe log. There is one more thing that I want to show everybody, and that is once you have finished your work uh, in the uh, special event, you will need to send the log to Mike Magnotti, right? How do you do that? What you want to do, export, and then it says export aid of to file, and you've got to pick that twice. And then if you had something in the log, let me put something back in. And now I can export it. File, export, export aid of to file, export aid of to file. I don't know why you've got to pick that twice, but pick those two. And then it brings up uh, this window and you see it's, it's going to, in my case, put it in C, N1MM, N1MM logger export files. Now your path may be different. Probably some of yours say C, documents, N1MM. Anybody seeing that? It's wherever you set up your documents directory for N1MM. Now that happens when you install in one mm when you do that right click and so on, you have an opportunity to pick two directories. Where is in one mm going to be installed and where are the uh, document files going to go? And there is a gotcha in that story. Some Windows computers are set up to uh, mirror their documents folder to OneDrive or maybe to Google Drive. That creates problems for N1MM. So you want to keep it out of those directories. And in my case, I had that situation. So I just told it to set up documents in a folder called C backslash N1MM. When you have this window up that you've got displayed right now, could you not go on the left-hand side and pick some other place to serve the yes, save the file? Yes, absolutely. You can put it any place you want to. Yeah, in my case, for example, I don't have the computer that I use for logging connected to the internet. So I would put the file onto a thumb drive and then move that over to another computer and send it somewhere. This is uh, letting you pick up here, you'll see the default. So I can just say, save that. And now I would be ready to send the file to Mike. My one question is, when are we gonna send this to Mike? Or, because this is a several day event. You know, I may be operating for several, probably several different time slots. Am I just gonna wait till the whole thing's over and then send him the whole, the whole log? Uh, just keep using the same log file mm -hmm. and it'll timestamp with all the dates and all the bands correctly, pr provided that you've told it the truth by clicking over here or you've interfaced it to your rig. So yeah, he doesn't need interim files. He just wants the final result. So my plan is to, to operate remote QTH for part of the contest from Cobb and then for my home QTH the remainder. Does that, should I differentiate those in the log or does it make a difference? I would make two logs for that. Cobb Island is in a different grid square, so it probably would be a good idea to use two different logs. Yeah, and just, just for everybody's information, yeah, I've set up three um, log book of the world uh, QTHs, and one is FM18 Virginia, one is FM18 Maryland, because Cobb Island is in, in the same grid square as us. 
And then there's FM 19, because we have a couple of club members up there. I stand corrected. Thank you, Mike. I thought uh, the Cobb Island was not in FM 18, but thanks for letting us know that. Um, I would still separate out the Cobb Island ones because uh, Mike wanted might want to do some statistics on how many came from there and so on. So I would say two logs if you're going to Cobb Island and working from home. We'll do. That won't be any problem. I have a remote station. I use a different computer. So it's fine. Mm -hmm. Uh, I have uh, two more topics to cover. One is configuring um, N1MM to interface with your rig, and the other is uh, configuring for FT8. Uh, if you're not going to interface to your rig, you can ask your questions and then feel fee free to drop off. Uh, the configuration of your rig is a short story. You're welcome to stay for that as well, so up to you but I do want to pause for any further questions at this point. I have a quick one, uh, Doug, and that is the uh, run and S and P, which stands for search and pounce. You want to tell us whether those are important and what we need to do there? So first of all, running means calling CQ and search and pounce in a contest means that you're looking for other stations calling CQ and you're going to answer them. If you are not interfacing your rig, then it doesn't matter and you don't need to worry about run versus search and pounce. However, do we have any CW people who would like to machine and send using N1MM? That's a possibility. Yeah, I'll be running CW, uh, Doug, but I'm quite familiar with it. Uh, I usually interface with the rig and use it to send my CQ and all that sort of thing and uh, configure the the F1 and F2 kind of the way I want it and so forth. But it uh, works okay. really well, especially okay. if you select ESM or enter send message in the configuration file. Because if you do that, you press the enter key and it sends CQ. You type the guy's call sign in, you press enter again and it sends the exchange and you're good to go for the next one. It works really well. Yes, exactly. So if you have the rig interfaced, and are telling it to send your, your CW messages, you get a series of buttons which you can edit and the messages change to the appropriate messages for calling CQ or for answering CQ. So that's what these radio buttons do. If you can also use them if you're working sideband and you can record your CQ message into an audio file and then you can use these same buttons to send your CQ and deliver the exchange and so on. Now, I haven't done that. I think it's uh, probably unlikely that you guys want to do that, but it is a capability of N1MM. I'm not going to obviously cover the details of how to set that up, but it would involve audio recordings. You could even go to the level of recording individual letters and numbers and it will I use those recordings to machine send the partner's call sign. That's, that's probably a little bit over the top for what we're doing. However, that's, that's the answer uh, here on run versus search and pounce. It changes the macros that would be sent by CW or audio, or if you're working ready, uh, you can use these, the same button collection uh, to send the messages via ready. So that, that's what it's all about. By the way, when, when we do send CQ, are we just going to send CQ and then send W4F as the call sign, or is there something else we should be sending? Uh, in general, CQ plus the call sign is sufficient. Uh, however, there is an FCC requirement that uh, once per hour you identify uh, your station call. And there's a, uh, on the uh, support page on the website, there's a suggested script for doing all that. Uh, so you, you know, once an hour, you might want to hand send that or you could make a button for it if you wanted to. Okay, when all else fails to read the instructions, sorry, I asked the question. <laughs> no, that's, that's fine. That was a good question. What are the different, I heard you mention RIDI, um, which I kind of like, and um, I, what are the modes we're, we're using for, for this? So we're using CW, phone, and FT8. Okay. All right. However, if somebody really, really wanted to do RIDI, I don't think there's a law against it. Right, Bill? Nope, no law. And in fact, we're also going to run uh, AM on a limited basis because of uh, 
the history with Reginald Fessenden. So if you want to operate AM, here's your chance. I just wanted to say thank you for that explanation. And the, one of the reasons I asked it was because I want to make sure that everybody knows that this is a special event and we're not looking for other people. We want people to call us. So uh, everybody should be in the run mode. That is, you should find yourself a nice clear frequency. Don't forget to spot yourself and then start calling CQ Whiskey 4 Foxtrot and let people come to you. You're not going to go looking for people as Whiskey 4 Foxtrot. You're going to expect people to come to you. When you say spot yourself, I'm not clear what that means and why I should do it. Okay. A8Z may explain DX Watch to you in a second, but the reason that what it means is you're going to, you, on, on all these spotting networks that people look at to find stations they want to call or work, uh, you're going to list yourself just before you start and the frequency you're going to be on. And that way people who are, who are big spot watchers will go down and see Whiskey 4 Foxtrot, hopefully say, hmm, that's an interesting call, and they'll start calling you. So, Mike, you want uh, A8 said, would you like to say something about uh, uh, spotting in DX Watch, for example? And I would also say, by the way, it really isn't immoral or fattening to call somebody with the call Whiskey for Foxtrot if you, you know, aren't uh, having much success calling CQ, and you know, make a few contacts that way. So, sure, I didn't mean to say you shouldn't do it. I would just say that. The, the plan is for you to be so popular that you won't need to go look for people. They should look for you. Mm -hmm. So uh, I think you now can see my screen and my screen has the QRZ page for W4F up. Yes. 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 Okay. So what will happen is people will see this call sign W4F or they'll hear about it in, in QST or whatever. And what they'll do is they'll come to the W4F page. And in fact, uh, there are 385 people already come to this page. Well, at the bottom of the page, I posted the uh, dxwatch.com site, which is in fact going to be the spot site that will, if you will, people can look and see where we are operating. So if I want to know where W4F is on 80 meters, because I want to work them on 80 meters and 40 meters and 20 meters, and I've done the 20 meters and 40 meters, I'll just look at this list. Now, of course, there's no activity on W4F right now. The last activity was the user of this uh, call sign W4F back in June. Okay, I my, my test a couple weeks ago. So the question is, how do you, so that's why we're doing this, is we want other people to be able to find us on the spotting networks. There are multiple spotting networks out there. We've chosen to use DX Watch because that's what QRZ uh, uses and uh, et cetera, et cetera. But, uh, uh, but if you have a spotting uh, network you use, spot us on DX Summit or, or whatever, and uh, it'll, it'll be useful for some people. And they, they interface with each other. So that's why you're doing that. Now, uh, that's all I wanna say is it's on the website, we want it populated so that people know where we're operating and uh, they know where to go find us if they're looking for us. You know, think about the 13 colonies. I was looking for Delaware. So I'd go to the spotting program and I'd look for uh, uh, K3D or whatever their call sign was. And I'd see they were operating on 40 meters and I'd go down the 40 meters and find them. Mike, if I could ask a follow-up question, I just registered this morning for DX Watch. So, are you saying that all I have to do is type in W4F in, uh, in DX Watch, and that's that's called, that's what spotting myself means? No, I'll tell you what you do. Let me just do it. DX uh, Watch. Okay, so this is DX Watch coming up here, uh, and uh, I have to log in. Give me one second. Okay, now I've logged myself in. And if I want to look at the DX spots that are out there, um, let's see, DX spots, uh, spot uh, name. So here's, here, are, here are people who are spotting people. So this guy, K4IU, spotted KOPR, and he was uh, on 28008, and it was done at this time. But let's say, for example, I want to spot my friend, uh, uh, my friend who's uh, operating W4F, okay, and he's operating on a frequency of 28444, um, and I can say strong signal in Virginia, but I don't have to say that. 
I don't have to put anything in that column. I can send that spot. And what's gonna happen in a minute or so is we're gonna see an update of this. But you can see that uh, that spot, W4F, and there I am, I spotted them at this frequency at this time. Yeah, a whole bunch of people are out there looking for Whiskey 4 Fox. <laughs> yeah, maybe, oh, the poor guys. And, uh, and if I were to update, uh, if I were to refresh this page in the web book, uh, resubmit, uh, ooh, okay, let's see what happens when I do that. So there you see me right there. I've now done it twice. I did it on the 4th and I did it on the 12th. So this is a spotting program. Now, normally you don't spot yourself, right? Uh, but there's nothing that says that we can't create a small group of Vienna wireless guys whose purpose in the life is just to go out there and spot uh, W4F and put it in the uh, spotting program, uh, various spotting programs. And uh, that way we get popular on the spotting programs and people will go out there and look. Mike, it, but there should be no problem with, as you just did, you're, you're spotting yourself W4F, but you're listing the DE as WAAHZ. So if I'm, yeah. if I'm up at two o'clock in the morning and I'm operating and there's nobody around, I can just put K1NME as the DE and W4F and spot myself. Yeah, you can. Right. Uh, uh, and when we're done, do we have to unspot ourselves? <laughs> nope. What'll happen is it'll get buried in the, uh, it'll get buried in the things. It's last, I mean, you saw how quickly, uh, I mean, we've just been talking for a couple of minutes, right? Uh, where was I when I spotted this thing? I was number two. There I am, right there. I mean, these just got wow. spotted in the last couple of minutes. So if you want to go talk to Luxembourg, there they are on 14076. That's interesting. That's uh, so the, the one thing that I want to clear up is that we're asking everybody to spot themselves to get started so that you don't sit there calling CQ for a while before anybody hears you. And, uh, and then you can ask them to spot you. Go ahead and spot yourself. In the case of a special event, there's nothing wrong with spot, self-spotting at all. This is not a contest. This is for fun. So yeah. please uh, go ahead, register for DX Watch. Or if you have another spotting system that you're used to, go ahead and do that. They all sort of interlink at one point or another. And then but just before you start calling CQ on your, uh, when it's your, uh, your time slot, spot yourself and then start calling CQ right away. And hopefully somebody will look you up and see you and go come looking for Whiskey 4 Fox. Well, what, what about FT8? Uh, can we do it also for FT8? Sure. sure. I mean, it, I, there's there's some FT8s in here now. You know, reality is I don't really worry about FT8 too much because you have the band activity uh, uh, register that tells you everybody who's calling CQ. Yeah, so you sure. can see. I mean, what's the problem with signal sideband? Uh, nobody knows you're calling because they aren't on your frequency, right? right. And you aimlessly tune back and forth until you find somebody calling CQ. In the case of... Uh, in the case of uh, uh, FT8, and I don't know, is FTH showing up on my screen right now, by the yeah, way? Yes. Okay. I know everybody who's calling CQ. Those are all the people calling CQ. Uh, you don't need to do it in FT8, but it doesn't hurt it. And a lot of people do spot in FT8. Spotting is useful, particularly on CW and single sideband, because you can't see the whole band. Unless, Doug, you want to talk about the band map that M1MM produces oh, probably I, beyond. I don't think we need beyond, that. beyond our needs because we're not doing search and spout. We're we're the we're the we're the runner. Okay, we're going to stay up at one frequency, and we want to really hold that frequency. In fact, uh, if I see uh, if I'm doing single sideband and I look on the uh, sign up roster and I see that Mike Denhardt is before me, I'm going to uh, look for him on the band. Okay, because I know he's working 20 meters. And I'm going to basically roost on his frequency. And as soon as he's done with his two-hour block, he's going to end his call by saying, uh, thank you very much uh, for participating in W4F. Uh, this is WA8AHZ signing off. And I'm going to immediately jump onto that frequency and say, this is W4F, and this is w the k 4 cdn And uh, I am operating a special event station in the 120th anniversary of uh, uh, wireless voice communications. And I'm gonna pick that frequency and I'm gonna hold it. 
at least I'm going to attempt to. Now, some somebody may jump into my frequency, and then you've got a judgment call of if you want to be obstinate, say, look, this frequency is in use. Your bigger problem is going to be managing pileups. You're going to have four or five people calling you. It might have 10, 12 people calling you, and you've got to have a plan for how you're going to handle a lot. Uh, pileups, and we're not. That's not the purpose of today. But uh, permit a question from the permit a question from the newbie. Um, I in one of the uh, contests I did participate in some months ago, I sat and listened to a guy doing a run and with a real pileup, and I could never get him to respond to me. But it sounds like since we're only giving our information out, and we really don't care about their signal report coming back or anything else. If you have a bunch of people and you just tell them, just give me your call sign, and then you respond with the, that person's call sign and give them a number, you're done. So it could be an extraordinarily quick set of exchanges. Doesn't have to be though. I mean, for example, I might get a guy in uh, Michigan in Okanagan County, and I need Okanagan County. And so I may say to that guy, hey, will you mind uh, uh, working me, uh, I'm going to change my call sign to my station call sign. And I'm going to work that guy in Okanagan because oh, okay. that's yeah. one of four counties in the state of Michigan I need. <laughs> now, I am convinced there are no ham radio operators in Okanagan County, by the way. But hold that thought. Uh, but I, uh, this, is your, this is your activity. You do with it what you want. If you want to have a little bit of a QSO with a guy, a little bit of a QSO, what you'll find is a bunch of people will leave your frequency because they, they're not going to sit there and listen yeah. to something. Uh, but uh, you control you control it. Yeah, well, that's true. That's a good point because this is not a contest. As uh, somebody, uh, a couple of people have said repeatedly, so all we're trying we're not trying to gain points or anything. We're just trying to advertise this uh, event. Yeah. You know, speaking speaking of mischief, uh, the last time we had a special event, you know, I jumped in to the CW Ops contest, which is, you know. Uh, they're an hour long, three times a day, uh, with a special event call sign just, and uh, there the exchange was the name and state, so I sent the exchange of Vienna, Virginia, and, uh, you know, had a fun time. So do stuff like that if you feel like it. We might be worthwhile to prepare to at least read the Wapedic uh, page on uh, about this fellow a little bit. Uh, more than once I've been asked, um, you know, what's your station about? And it's nice to be able to, to say a little bit about the guy versus directing him, you know, off to the website or something. And I know in the past, you know, when I've worked uh, special event stations overseas, you know, occasionally you'll ask, you know, tell me about the guy and, and they get really excited. So it's, it's kind of fun to know a little bit about what we're doing. All right, good point. The DX watch page seems to be only showing 50 rows maximum. Uh, is there a way to uh, see the rest of the world that might be on it or? I think there was a setup screen somewhere inside of it. I saw that. But usually I don't worry too much because those guys are uh, way back in time and they may have moved off that frequency. So I don't tend to go back that far. But yeah, I think there was a setup screen that lets you have as many rows as you wanted. Yeah, because 50, 50 looks to be the max. Okay, well, um, you're usually only looking for the top. Well, generally speaking, you're looking down, not, uh, not three, four, five minutes ago. But, you know, I guess that's all there is. Okay, thanks. And you can, you can apply filters as well off on these sites. You can decide what band you want or what station you're looking for. Or band or, or mode. I mean, the flexibility and setup is huge, by the way. So now I'm going to talk about uh, interfacing N1MM with uh, CAT control. So if you want to hook up your rig, you want to configure, go to this configure ports, mode control, wind key, et cetera. Now it turns out that um, my cat control is on COM4. Let me try flex 6000 and I'll set. It, it tells me what it thinks the settings ought to be. And I know better than it does. So, it wants to know the speed, the uh, parity, which is often in, data bits, stop bits, and these it's suggesting always off. I don't have an ICOM code on this rig, and um, I'm only working with one radio. 
that should be all I need to um, to make it go. So let me see. Let me go there. And now, if you look at this screen, uh, you see that uh, uh, it's showing a frequency and a mode. All right. And if I change the big knob, you see the, the frequency changing at the top of the screen and in 1MM. So that's how you know cat control is working. That's pretty much all there is to cat control. Now, if you want to do CW, you have a wind key or interface, which my rig does. It's on COM9. So I would say COM9, check the CW other, and check wind key or here. Now in 1MM will send uh, CW for me using these function keys. For those of us that are only going to operate SSB, um, and if we're trying to sit and uh, run as opposed to search and pounce, then the, the utility of rig control is marginal. I mean, you're just going to sit on one frequency. And I thought at the beginning we said, all we're going to do is, is identify the band. We're not going to put a, the exact frequency that we're operating on. Is that right? Uh, so I agree with you. If if um, uh, you don't need to set up rig control, uh, it's just um, you know a convenience if you think you're going to be shopping, hopping around bands a little bit because then it will ensure that the log stays in sync with what you did. But am I correct that we're not going to put down uh, 28.444? We're just going to put uh, 20 meters. Uh, you don't need to put the precise frequency now. It, if you interface this way, it will record the precise frequency. We don't care either way. The benefit of uh, doing the interface like I just did is that if you move around bands, you won't get out of sync between what you were tuned to and what you logged as. In terms of getting credit for logging in these QSOs, will we be able to get credit or are these strictly just in W4F? And, and, and then if you don't put down the frequency, I don't know how you would get credit against your call sign or my call sign. Okay, well, I guess uh, a couple of questions there. As far as I know, you can't get DXCC credit for your call sign when you were transmitting a different call sign. That's uh, probably kind of a non-issue. It, it will uh, record the fact that you were the operator because when we looked at the log, you know, you put your call sign here when we did the configuration. Now, Mike uh, will take care of all the uploads to QRZ and so on, and they'll, you know, go in as Whiskey 4F, you know, be able to be confirmed that way. That's the story. Let's see, one more thing. Another thing that uh, it's, it's sensing is mode control. If uh, your radio does not support mode control, you might want to pick follow band plan. Uh, or you, if you are always phone, you could click, you know, always phone. Or, and that would work fine. At the very beginning, you, I mentioned that I did not right click uh, on the installation and do it as administrator. You said we'd take care of the problems if they occurred. Where would I expect to find a problem that would cause me to want to reinstall? I haven't, I've managed, I followed what you were doing and put in a couple of fictitious um, uh, contacts and then wiped the log uh, and saved the log. So am I good to go? Yeah, I would say with high confidence, everything is fine. I think if you were going to have a problem, it would have shown up by now. Thank you.